Buying the Kawasaki ZH2 was not an easy thing for me to do. She's a very expensive motorcycle, and when you already have an expensive motorcycle that you're still paying for, and you try adding another one into the mix, yeah, sacrifices needed to be made. And for me, I had to sell my old Honda CBR 600RR, and I absolutely loved that motorcycle. In fact, recently we did a video on how much I miss her, but it had to be done in order for me to afford this motorcycle right here. And the way I did that was by par exchanging her. But was that the right thing to do? So of course, guys, as you're probably already aware, I do not regret my decision in any way, shape or form. I absolutely love the ZH2. And yeah, I was more than happy to sacrifice my beloved CBR 600 rr uh, for this bike. And I mean, the CBR was getting on a bit anyway. She was registered in January of 2004. And I believe from memory, she was a 2003 model. And uh, just, <laughs> just gonna walk my fingers here just a little bit before we set off. But yeah, she was an absolutely fantastic motorcycle. But I mean, yeah, I did try selling her on Facebook Marketplace, on Gumtree. I didn't do Auto Trader in the in the end, just because, well, I don't know. Auto Trader sometimes can be a bit finicky, but yeah, for me, I've had the most success on Gumtree and on Facebook Marketplace when it comes to just sending things in general. You could do eBay as well, I suppose, but. Unfortunately, it took too long to sell, which is a real shame because she was in really good nick, that bike. I mean, she did have, unfortunately at the end, she did have a leaky fork seal, which is a real shame, but I mean, you know, that's just what happens with old bikes. And I mean, in the end, I just, I just thought to myself, look, we'll, we'll just do a part exchange because it, it was convenient and I wanted to get the ZH2 around my birthday anyway as a as a I don't know like a, thir a, a 30 birthday 30 gift you know that kind of thing and I don't, I don't like I said I don't regret it at all but I mean is part exchange worth it because I think a lot of people get quite a negative impression including me of part exchanging anything because you're never ever going to get the value of the bike the dealership has to make a profit on the bike that you're selling to them but i'm actually going to tell you why part exchanging has actually been pretty good for me at least in my in my own experience i i have no doubt that some people out there have been ripped off by part exchange before i have absolutely no doubt about that whatsoever but yeah let's move off here the bike is reading three degrees Celsius today. Blech. Absolutely horrendous weather for riding a motorcycle. I mean, I haven't experienced much ice today though, which is good. But yeah, it, it is cold, man. It's very, very cold today. Woo. So yeah, I mean, the value of that CBR 600RR at the time was around about £3,000, roughly, roughly £3,000 on the used market, at least compared to how much others were selling for, for that age, for that mileage, for that condition. So that's what I priced it at. I think I priced it at £3,000, but when no one, no one even bit, I I think I put the price down to £2,900 or maybe even £2,800 just to try and sell it. And again, I had a couple of people come over, but they, they, I, I don't know what they were thinking. I mean, the bloody pictures were on the advert, but they thought it was a newer CBR 600RR for some reason. They thought it was like a 2005 model or something like that, or a 2006 model, but Anyway, yeah, no one, no one ended up buying it. So that's why in the end I was just like, right, whatever, I'll just, I'll just go part exchange. The dealership offered me in part exchange £2,200 for it, which I thought was a bloody good deal, considering that 
you know they've got to make their money on it and things like that I mean, i'm sure the dealership themselves probably actually would charge closer to four thousand pounds for it in the garage but yeah i mean for me it worked out pretty well because i wasn't losing out on that much money you know i mean i was prepared to to take 2700 quid for it something like that and you know okay yeah I, I i missed out on 500 quid but how long was it going to take for me to sell and unfortunately selling motorcycles privately can be a tough thing to do it can be really hard even for sport bikes man which doesn't make a lot of sense to me how even sport bikes will struggle selling <laughs> but hey it, it is what it is and in the end i just decided to go part exchange one because it was convenient but two i wanted to get the zh2 by a certain time but it was a pretty good deal and i didn't feel like i was getting ripped off or anything like that and even when i bought my zr 1400 as well my experience of part exchange was pretty good now at the time i had a kawasaki er6 which was a two-cylinder parallel twin 650 cc it produced i think about 70 something horsepower i can't remember exactly what it was it wasn't the most powerful thing in the world by any means but she was a really good bike i i really i really liked her but in the end i didn't think i'd be able to sell that bike anyway i didn't think i'd be able to sell it so i just automatically went to part exchange for it and she wasn't in the best condition in the world to, to be honest she did have rust spots and i mean as far as i was aware all the fork seals were okay the tires were good i mean i think i'd only run the tires for about a year so she was pretty good in in most areas but i still thought that she was probably worth less than a thousand pounds and to my surprise well the, the dealership that i was buying the zr off of they ended up offering me over a thousand pounds i think it was 1100 quid for it and i was surprised i was very very surprised i think i i think i was thinking to myself at the time i'd be lucky if i could get one thousand pounds for it just selling it but to be fair i didn't i didn't look that hard at selling it at all because i just automatically had that assumption that it wasn't going to be worth very much but yeah i got 1100 quid from it i think from the dealership so for me at least part exchanging has been mostly a positive experience but you know how it is with cars a lot of the time if you're trying to part exchange a car man they really knock off the value for a car it's ridiculous how much they knock off when a car is worth 5k you'd be lucky if you get two grand for it from a dealership stupid at least that's from my experience anyway but i mean I suppose that's another thing to mention as well. I've actually found it a lot easier selling cars than I have <laughs> selling motorcycles. I mean, I suppose it makes sense. More people are looking for cars than they are bikes. But yeah, I mean, that, that's, that's my experience. But for the most part, bike exchange, actually, for motorcycles at least, has been pretty good. So if you are actually looking to sell your bike in the near future, don't be afraid to look at bike exchange, at least if they are a reputable garage and you know that they're not going to take you for a ride and stuff like that yeah i mean it has to be a garage that that you can trust you know it can't just be one of these back alley garages because then they will probably try to con you but yeah guys honestly look at part exchange yeah it's you're not going to get as much as probably the bike's worth you're not going to get anywhere near what the bike is worth but you'll get pretty damn close and if it means the difference between you being able to afford your next bike and not then for me it's totally worth it totally worth it yeah my, my experience has been positive guys all in all on, on part exchange so i don't i'm not going to bash it but i understand why people are skeptic are skeptical of of doing part exchange yeah but I mean, th th think about it from that way. The garage itself has got to make money off of your bike, you know? They don't keep it, they obviously need to sell it. And they'll make a markup on it as well on top of what the bike is actually worth because bikes and garages are usually worth more than what they are if you're selling them privately. And they have to be, because that's how the garages make their money, you know? I mean, imagine if my CBR600RR was, was actually worth 3,000 pounds. 
and they offered me 2,200 quid for it, seven, seven, 800 quid profit isn't an awful lot, is it? Especially when I knew that they would have to fix the fork seal and God knows what else was probably wrong with it that they would have had to have fixed. For the most part, I thought it was all right, but you never know with these things. I'm not a mechanic, so <laughs> there was probably some other problems with it that they had to fix before they could sell it on. But yeah, there wouldn't have been much profit in it for them. So, I mean, yeah, you, you do kind of think to yourself that they, they have to mark it up. So they probably were looking to sell that bike for around about three and a half thousand pounds is my, is my guess. There we go, guys and gals. I mean, definitely let me know your thoughts about part exchange and your experience of part exchange in the past, whether or not you have been ripped off by a garage in the past by part exchange. And, you know, what do you think of it nowadays? Yeah, and let me know what kind of bikes they were as well that you were that you were trying to part exchange. Were they in good nick? Were they in fairly poor nick? Did you think you got the better end of the deal, basically, is what I'm trying to ask. I think for me personally, I think I, I did. In my experiences, I think I did. But yeah, I'd, I'd love to know what you guys think. Cause look, I mean, the whole, the, whole, the whole thing about this video is to kind of spread awareness of, of certain things that could catch you out when it comes to buying and selling motorcycles. So the more that, the more that people say, the more that people kind of let, the more people that let us know their experiences, the better. All right, guys and gals, thank you ever so much for watching today's video. I hope you've had a, hope you've enjoyed this little ride out with me. I mean, I I haven't really enjoyed it all that much. I mean, perfectly honest with you, this weekend has been god awful cold, and yeah, I mean, I, I have had to keep these films short recently just with the weather. But again, like I said, let me know your thoughts down in the comments of how you feel about the certain topics that we've been talking about recently. Check us out on Patreon. Definitely go and have a look at subscribing on there. You gain access to our exclusive Discord server. And massive thank yous for all of our current patrons. Mark W, you're an awesome dude. Thank you very much for your support. And yeah, thanks again, everyone, for joining me on today's ride. Leave a like, hit subscribe. Merry Christmas. And we will catch you all in the next video. Have a good one.